Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman, and we're, we're uh, talking about how to get to know God intimately in the power of resurrection. And like I always do, um, the only way to get to know God intimately is preach the whole Word of God, the whole counsel of God, the Old and New Testament, and that's what we've been doing. And of course, we've been spending quite a time on this last one because it's a big subject, supernatural beings. We started talking about God as a supernatural being, and then as human spirits as supernatural beings, God's angels as supernatural beings, and Satan and his fallen and supernatural beings. And then now we're coming and talking about the believers. That's all those who receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Now they're no longer in Satan's family, Satan's army. We're no longer in God's family, God's army. And we've been talking about our weapons and we talked about extensively the armor of God and everything, and the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus, powerful weapons that the devil cannot stand against. So, everything's been placed beneath our feet, and according to Ephesians 1, 16 to 23, and, and of course, we, we know and we uh, um, beneath our feet, and the only way that Satan can work in a Christian's life is if that a Christian allows the devil to work in his life. We have a choice to make as Christians. Are we going to serve God, be separated from the world and serve God? Or are we going to continue to try to enjoy the world, but hopefully we can make it to heaven because we asked Jesus to come into heart 20 years ago. See, that's not going to work. We make a choice to receive Jesus as Lord that means he's Lord 24-7, every day of our life is Jesus, Jesus, God, God, God. Every day of our lives. Like the world used to be every day of our life. Now God is every day of our life. And so the only way Satan can work in our lives is if we let him. But I refuse to, to be conformed to the world's values and standards anymore. That's done. That's over with. I'm not part of the world. I don't want to be part of the world. It's temporary. It's going to be gone. It's the way to hell. I want to be part of heaven. And so I make a choice to do that. I make a choice to live in victory. I make a choice to give the devil no place in my life. All authority has been given to us. Our authority has been restored. Jesus defeated Satan for you and me and given us absolute authority over Satan. Praise be to God. All right. So then, I think, and then of course, James 4, 7. That's another thing that he gave me when he, he said, when he said, Jim, I want you to exercise your authority over, you know, the authority I've given you. I've given you my name. I've given you my blood. I've given you the authority of the believer. And then also James 4, 7. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And literally means he will flee from you as if in terror. So we submit to God in everything that we do. Praise be to God. All right. Now, let me also talk about deliverance and demon possession. And just clear up a few misunderstandings that circulate in the Christian circles. And first of all, we're talking about deliverance and demon possession. And now get this. Christians cannot be demon possessed or indwelled by demons in any way, shape, or form. When you're born again and you receive Jesus, you receive the indwelling spirit, which means Jesus, the Holy Spirit, comes to dwell in you now that you're a Christian. He lives inside of you. And there's no way that the devil and the Holy Spirit can live side by side inside of anybody because the devil or sin or, or anything cannot come into God's presence. He lives in us. So there's one example of a demon being cast out of, there's not one example, not one example of a demon being kissed, Chris, cast out of a Christian under the new blood covenant. Demons were only cast out of those who were not born again. All right. That's why we are to go into all the world and cast out devils. He did not say in, go to all the churches and cast out devils. Remember in Mark 16, in my name, they shall cast out devils. Well, there's a problem. You know, it seems like there was such an extreme in casting out devils, you know, the charismatic movement and, and so forth, which we were part of starting back in 1972. 
And that, you know, all of a sudden it occurred to me, why are we going into churches? It seemed like always the same people coming up for prayer, casting out devils, casting out devils. He said, go into all the world and cast out devils. That's where they're at. They shouldn't be in the church. <laughs> Not if the pastor's preaching the word of God. People would be prepared to go out and cast out devils and not allow them to be in their church. So then, let's go out, if you, let's go out into all the world and set the captives free. Now, the born-again human spirit has the life of God, and the life is in the blood, and God's life is in my blood. My blood flows to every part of my physical body. God's light, God's power, God's life flows to every part of my body. The devil cannot dwell in God's life or presence. Leviticus 17, 17 11, for the, well, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Acts 20, 28, God purchased a church with his own blood. Proverbs 4, 23, protect your heart at all costs, for out of it flow the horses of life. James 2, 26, faith without works or corresponding actions is dead. Ephesians 2, 1 to 5, we were dead in our sins, but now we've been made alive unto God. And so then we have to know then that that Christians can be oppressed by the devil from the outside with his lies, but they cannot live inside of the Christian. And of course, if the Christians will yield their minds to these lies and to these deceptive thoughts, then there can be a problem because we need to cast down these temptations all the time, not yield to these thoughts, or they'll become a stronghold in our thoughts and our Christian thinking. We can come over here to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verses 3, 4, and 5. Uh, oh, what am I doing? That's 1 Corinthians. There is a 2 Corinthians. 10, 3, 4, and 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. In other words, people are not our enemies. It's a spiritual warfare. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down arguments or reasoning and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring every thought into the captivity uh, to the obedience of Christ. Into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And so we're to bring every thought in line with God's word. Don't allow any of our thoughts to be in our mind that are contrary or lies. Don't, don't dwell on them. Because if you do, pretty soon... It'll be, they, these thoughts have become a stronghold in our minds and then that's the gateway into the human spirit. So it's a spiritual warfare. So we need to cast all these thoughts down. Otherwise, these thoughts, faith comes by hearing. Pretty soon you believe the lie and of course you'll end up doing the lie. And that's how the devil tries to control Christians with demons through your mind. Now, Christians do not actually have a demon in them unless they make a choice to allow the demons to take possession of their minds, then we've got a problem. But Romans 12, 2 again, he said, you know, be, you know, we're not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed. And so let's make sure we get our minds renewed and guard our thinking. Don't let the devil get, oppress you. So they can come at us from the outside, trying to tempt us to do all kinds of things, oppress us in every way. But we, do, we make a choice not to yield to any of those temptations or oppressive thoughts. We just cast them down, the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, and all the weapons that have been given us through the word of God and everything else. Now, as Christians, our spirits and bodies belong to God. And I should cut it off right there. This session, time goes too fast. <laughs> Be blessed in everything that you set your hands to do, and we'll see you in the next session. Amen. <laughs>